So, it is time for the moment that you've all been waiting for all spoiler season. Yes, that's right. It's time for the Golden Pig of the Brothers War and the Brothers War Precons. Throughout spoiler season, commanders have been competing for this incredibly prestigious award. And the winner of the Golden Pig will, of course, receive the Golden Pig, a pig made of definitely gold. 100% pure, definitely gold. And of course, the winner upon receiving this will display it proudly and cherish it forever. Now, really quick before we jump into the picks for the Golden Pig Award, these picks are 100% based off my own opinions on what I consider to be the best commanders from the set in the pre-cons, and they might be selected for one reason or another, and your selections might differ, and that's okay. Also, just to clarify, these are my selections for what I deem to be the best commanders from the set, not which commanders are the most powerful. That is a completely separate episode where I rank the tiers. Yeah, basically these picks are based off of what I think are the best designed commanders, my favorite commanders from the set in the pre-cons. And of course, one more thing before we jump into the picks, make sure you blame Eddie in the comments below for all of Eddie's help during spoiler season. And if you don't like my picks, yeah, it's, it's Eddie's fault, not mine. Now with all that said, let's jump into it. So let's start things off at number 10 with Drafna, founder of Latinam. Drafna is a 2-1 human artificer advisor that costs 1 in a blue, and he has pay 1 in a blue, return target artifact you control to its owner's hand. And by paying 3, you can tap to copy target artifact spell you control, and of course that token becomes a copy. So this commander can definitely make the most out of an artifact-centric deck, allowing you to bounce artifacts back to your hand when you need to. Now, whether that's to protect them from an opponent's spell, or to use and abuse an ETB that they might have, or again, to interact with that second ability, you can bounce an artifact back to your hand, recast that artifact, and copy it with this commander to get even more value out of it. So this commander can very much be a value engine in and of itself, and yeah, with a deck built around it properly, you can do some pretty crazy things with it. That being said, you can also do some pretty broken things with it and quite easily at a certain point because again, that first ability is repeatable, so that actually kind of knocked it down my list just a tiny bit, though it still made the list at number 10. Again, an interesting value engine that can go about an artifact build in a couple of different exciting ways. Some cards to consider with a build built around this in ways that you can really take advantage of those abilities. I mean, the first one that definitely comes to my mind is Manifold Key. Manifold Key has pay one tap, untap another target artifact, so by bouncing this with your commander again and again and again, you can just keep utilizing this to untap very powerful mana rocks that can tap for a lot of mana, and yes, this is definitely a way to go infinite with this commander. Even without going infinite though, again, you can take advantage of this commander's other ability to make a copy of this artifact potentially to basically give you, you know, extra mana rocks in play, being able to untap your mana rocks very simply and very easily. Speaking of untapping, yeah, Quarter Monitor is another way to do that. When it enters the battlefield, untap target artifact or creature you control. So of course, this again can help you with a mana rock or another artifact that has an activate ability, or even help you untap your commander as well for its ability. One of the funniest interactions though has got to be with a card like Coveted Jewel that has, when it enters the battlefield, draw three cards. It can tap to add three mana of any one color, but also as a downside, whenever one or more creatures opponent controls attack you and aren't blocked, that player draws three cards and gains control of Coveted Jewel, untap it. So this card gives you a massive upside when it comes into play and in that you can use it, but your opponents can steal it and get the upside for themselves. But with this commander, just simply tap it for three blue, bounce it back to your hand, and you net one mana out of that while drawing three cards. So it kind of negates that downside, and also, of course, it can be a way to repeatedly draw cards throughout the game. Speaking of repeatable ETB effects that you can really take advantage of, next up let's talk about Mirror Battlesphere. When it enters the battlefield, you get four 1-1 colorless Mirror Artifact creature tokens. So yeah, being able to bounce this and get its ETB again and again and again can definitely be very impactful, or again, just utilizing your commander to make an extra copy of this, yes, can also just give you a ton of extra tokens to utilize. When it comes to utilizing creatures, though, you of course can utilize even opponent's creatures with Imposter Mech. You can have it enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature on the battlefield that an opponent controls, except it's a vehicle artifact with crew 3 and loses all other card types. So this one you can essentially set to your opponent's best creature, and then when you know another bigger, scarier creature comes into play, bounce it back to your hand and reset it as something else. 
And when it comes to resetting, there's Masterful Replication. It says choose one, create two, three, three colors, golem, artifact, creature tokens, or choose target artifact you control. Each other artifact you control becomes a copy of that artifact until end of turn. Again, with this commander's ability to go wide in various ways, again, making token copies of things, especially things like, you know, mere battle sphere, you can make a lot of artifacts. And when you do, you can turn all of them into a specific artifact to really take over a game. So yeah, again, Drafna can do some very exciting things. And again, Drafna, congratulations on your 10th place finish. But now let's move on to number nine with Urza, Prince of Krug. Urza is a 2-3 human artificer that costs 2, white and a blue, and it has artifact creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2, and pay 6, create a token that's a copy target artifact you control, except it's a 1-1 one, one soldier and issue to other types. So, like Drafna, Urza can be built in a way that is pretty combo-centric, but unlike Drafna, that actually moved it up the rankings for me at least. Now, that Anthem effect that pumps artifact creatures is nice, but the thing that I want to focus on, of course, is that second ability to make token copies of artifacts that we control. And while that is a decent amount of mana at six, we can still utilize that in some pretty interesting ways and very effective ways to again go infinite and especially go infinite with a very specific card that... Well, I've been kind of waiting for a commander to really work with up until this point. Now, of course, also keep in mind that the copies that this creates are also going to be soldier creature tokens as well. So, yes, they can be three threes essentially again with that pump effect from this commander. There is a downside and an upside to that. And we'll talk about that. But before that, let's get to the card that I have been waiting for a commander for. And that would be Power Stone Shard, which is an artifact for three that has tap, add, colors for each artifact you control named Power Stone Shard. Now, this card, of course, can be effective in other formats because, well, other formats allow you to use multiple copies of a single card. But in Commander, where you're restricted to just one copy per card, Power Stone Shard really doesn't work, you know, in the way that it is intended. But with this Commander, again, the more token copies we make of Power Stone Shard, the more mana each of them can produce. And at a certain point, we can go infinite with this Commander and make an infinite amount of Power Stone Shards. And well, then also, obviously, an infinite amount of all of our other artifacts, too. Now, do keep in mind that you need to be able to give your Power Stone Shard copies haste because, again, they are creature tokens and they will have summoning sickness. So, yeah, Lightning Greaves are a more budget-friendly card, even like Ring of Valkus can do the trick for you. Ring of Valkus simply says Quip Creature has haste and we can equip it for one. So, essentially, once our Power Stone Shards are tapping for seven mana each, we can easily go infinite, again, using six of that mana to make a Power Stone Shard, using the remaining mana to equip it to our new Power Stone Shard and tapping it for mana right away and again that would be eight mana that time so it does take some time to build up but yeah you'd want to build around this card if you're going for this kind of a strategy so utilize cards like trophy mage to go search for it then enters the battlefield you can search life for an artifact card with converted mana cost three reopen your hand then shuffle your library now of course there are other directions you can build around this commander i mean you could use something like a liquid metal torque which can tap for a colorless or you can tap and make target non-land permanent artifact in addition to other types until end of turn so you can essentially make any of your non-land permanents into artifacts and by doing that again you can copy them with urza which can lead to some very very crazy results you could also build more so in an artifact value or artifact storm build with something like foundry inspector artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast so first up yeah the more and more copies of this that you get into play the more your artifact spells are reduced in cost and you can just cast them for a lot less or even free in many circumstances and of course i mean being a three two in combination with this commander this is going to be a five four so again uh, you can make your artifacts of course much bigger threats so maybe you want to lean into that and then utilize again cards like Tempered Steel, Enchantment, Artifact Creatures you control get plus two, plus two. So now all those tokens that you're making are even bigger. Again, they start off as one ones, they're pumped by your commander, they'd be pumped by this. So they would be five fives essentially for every single one of those copies that you're making. So yeah, overall, Urza, a very interesting new commander. And again, one that works with a card that I've been waiting for for quite some time with Power Zone Shard. So yeah, Urza, congratulations on your spot at number nine. Moving on though, at number eight, we've got Thanos the Toymaker. Thanos is a 3-5 human artificer for three green blue, and he has, whenever you cast a beast or bird creature spell, you may copy it, except the copy is an artifact and it's other types, the copy becomes a token. 
It's always refreshing to see a Simic Commander that isn't all just about, you know, lands and card draw. Now, not that you can't, you know, ramp and get go get lands with a commander like this or draw a lot of cards with a commander like this, but the way that you're going to be doing it is by playing heavily into beasts and bird creature spells and making the most out of copying them. So just another way to generate value. And of course, with a deck built around this Thanos, well, you can lean more heavily into one or the other or both, but yeah, you can make the most of those tokens in a variety of ways as well, and you can do some really exciting things with a commander like this. First off, when it comes to a bird, one that can really help you is Curiosity Crafter. It's a 3-3 flyer that says you have a maximum hand size, and whenever a creature token you control deals counter into a player, draw a card. First up, again, getting a second copy of this is huge because, again, you're going to be getting that trigger twice then. Whenever a creature token you control with deal combination to a player, you get to draw two cards because of your two copies. And obviously, in a deck with a commander that's going to make a ton of creature token copies, you're going to be drawing a lot of cards with your Curiosity Crafters. Speaking of drawing a ton of cards, we've got a beast that can help us out as well with Garrick's Pack Leader. Whenever the creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under control, you may draw a card. So again, getting a second copy of this can be huge. I mean, we're going to be drawing right away from these, but yeah, now every single time we cast a creature that has power three or greater, we get to draw four cards because we're going to be making a copy of that bird or beast, getting two copies of it essentially, both of them going to play. We draw two for each of these pack leaders. And of course, we can take advantage of ETBs with creatures themselves, like Manglehorn, a 2-2 that has as much as Battlefield to may destroy target artifacts. So we can destroy two artifacts again with Manglehorn and its copy. And then it says artifacts your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. So this downside can of course persist for our opponents, even if this is dealt with. Next up, how about Rampaging Baylos? Getting a second copy of this can be quite crazy. A 6-6 Trampling Beast that is landfall. Whenever a lane enters the battlefield under control, you may create a 4-4 Green Beast creature token. So first up, just getting a second copy of this for 6 mana again, we are going to be getting 12 power across 2 bodies, 12 Trampling power at that. And then of course on top of that, whenever we have any lands come into play, that's going to be 8 extra power across 2 bodies. And yeah, since we're in green, of course we've got plenty of ways to get a lot of lands into play. Play. And of course, I mean, just keep in mind, if we crack an Evolving Wilds and go get another land, that can be even more crazy with fetch lands like that. Speaking of crazy, how about Blossoming Bog Beast? Getting a second copy of this is ridiculous. A 3-3 that has when it attacks you, gain two life, then creatures you control gain trim will get plus X plus X until end of turn. Rex the amount of life you gained this turn. So by getting a second copy of this and attacking with both, we will gain two life, give our creatures plus two, plus two, and trample. Then we're going to be gaining another two. So that'll be four life gained then at that point. So plus four, plus four, and trample. So overall, plus six, plus six, and trample to our entire army. Yeah, our opponents are going to be in big trouble. Speaking of trouble, we can really take advantage of populate effects with a commander like this. So yes, yeah, Slezny Aldris can work great in this kind of attack. By paying two and a green, we can exalt our creature card from a graveyard, then populate. So this can be some great graveyard hate against our opponent's decks. But also, again, we can just keep making token copies of whatever token creatures we want. So again, overall, I really like this new kind of a take on a Simic Commander. And again, Thanos, congratulations on finishing eighth. But next up, we're going to be moving on to 7th place with, well, Thanos. Thanos Psalm Survivor is another Thanos, a 1-3 Human Artificer for 1 and a blue. By paying 2, we can tap to create a token that's a copy of up to 1 target artifact we control and we mill 2 cards. And by paying 1 white, blue, black, we can tap to sacrifice 2 artifact tokens, exile an artifact or creature card from our graveyard, create a token that's a copy of the exile card, except it's an artifact to other types, activate only as a sorcery. So I really like the design of this commander, and of course, each of those abilities plays into each other. Even let's just say we have, you know, a food token, or a treasure token, or a clue token in play, we can utilize this commander to get an extra copy of it and mill two cards to help set ourselves up for that next ability. So then we utilize the other ability, sacrificing those two tokens, and getting whatever massive artifact or creature out of our graveyard back into play, essentially. I mean, we exile it, yes, but we get a token copy of it into play for us which we then, of course, can utilize that first ability to make extra copies of and set ourselves up for another card to utilize that second ability. So yeah, this commander, once you're set up properly, can definitely provide you a lot of value and do some pretty crazy things. And speaking of setting yourself up, well, you can do just that with cards like Weaponcraft Enthusiast that can make a lot of tokens. It's got Fabricate too, so when it enters the battlefield, you can make two 1-1 servo artifact creature tokens. Which, of course, again, you can utilize your commander to make even more tokens of them, or you can just sacrifice those tokens to get something massive out of your graveyard. 
And speaking of getting something massive out of your graveyard, a card like Final Parting can really help you set up for that. It's going to go get two cards out of your library. One goes into your hand and the other goes in your graveyard, then you shuffle. So you can go get that perfect card for your graveyard that you really want to utilize with your commander and also set yourself up for something else. And speaking of setting yourself up, well, you can do so in a different way with Sahili's Artistry, which kind of lets you skip a step. It says choose one or both, create a token that's copy target artifact, or create a token that's copy target creature, except it's an artifact in addition to other types. So if you want to make a lot of copies of something, well, you can just get it into play, make an artifact token copy of it, and then utilize your commander's first ability to keep making more and more token copies. And of course, yeah, that can get pretty out of control with certain things. For example, getting extra copies of something like Spine of Ishsa can really help you out. It's an artifact for seven. It says when it enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. So with our commander again for just two mana, we can essentially just keep destroying permanence over and over again. Or how about Magister Sphinx, which is a 5-5 flying Sphinx that says when it enters the battlefield, target player's life total becomes 10. So this is a great ETB that we can really use and abuse to take our opponents down. And of course, when we make a token copy of it, well, we can just keep utilizing it with our commander's first ability. And speaking of utilizing ETBs of artifact creatures, well, Song of the World Soul can really help us with that. It's an enchantment that says whenever you cast a spell, populate, which of course means create a token that's a copy of a creature token, you control. So essentially, again, if our commander just makes us one singular token copy of any artifact creature in our graveyard, you know, exiling it, making that token copy, we can set ourselves up in an incredible way with this to just have to cast spells to make more copies on top of our commander, be able to make copies itself. So yeah, Thanos can definitely do some very interesting things. And again, I really like the design aspect of this commander with both abilities working in tandem with each other. So again, Thanos, congratulations on your seventh place finish. But now it's time for us to move on to number six with Mishra, Tamer of Makhfawa. Mishra is a 4-4 human artificer that costs three black red and has permanent you control half ward, sacrifice a permanent. And on top of that, each artifact card in your graveyard has an earth for one black red. First up, protecting your permanents with ward sacrifice a permanent is a massive downside for your opponents. They are going to have to utilize a lot of their resources to be able to target your things. So that's just some great protection there. But of course, more importantly, being able to use your artifacts in a unique way like unearthing, that is definitely something I did not expect to see. And I'm very excited to see it because this commander can do some pretty crazy and off the wall things. Now, unearthing, of course, means you get that card back from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gets haste, it gets exiled at the beginning of the next end step, or if it leaves the battlefield, unearth only as a sorcery. So although there are some limitations to unearthing, it can still help you do some very, very interesting things. And there are ways to actually get around those limitations as well. And the main way to do this would be with Sundial of the Infinite. By paying one, you can tap and end the turn, activate this ability only during your turn. So basically, when you unearth something and you'd have to get rid of it at the end of the turn, you simply just end the turn and yeah. Now you get to keep that permanently. Of course, one way to set yourself up would be again with a card like, you know, Final Parting, like I mentioned previously, but also Faithless Looting. Faithless Looting says draw two cards and this card two cards, and you can flash it back for two and a red. So again, looting effects like this one allow you to draw deeper into your deck and also ditch big and powerful artifact cards that you're going to want to sneak into play with your commander. And although that unearth cost of one black red is already very cheap, you can make it even cheaper with something like Convergence of Dominion. This card says, as long as you control your commander, activate abilities of cards in your graveyard cost two less to activate. So essentially, we're taking that cost down from one black red to just black red, and that is a massive savings throughout the game. On top of that, we can also pay three and tap to mill three cards with this. So again, milling is another way to fill our graveyard with great artifacts that we want to unearth. But we can also take advantage of unearthing our artifacts with Immotech the Stormlord. It says whenever one of our artifact cards leave your graveyard, create two to two black Necron artifact creature tokens. With this kind of a commander, we're going to be unearthing artifacts a ton, and they're going to be, of course, leaving our graveyard when we do that, so we can make a massive army in absolutely no time with this. And speaking of massive, we, of course, can cheat out some massive artifacts like a Combustible Gearhawk with a fantastic ETB that we can utilize right away. It's a 6-6 with first strike that has ventures of the battlefield. Target opponent may have you draw three cards. If the player doesn't, you mill three cards. Then Combustible Gearhawk deals damage to that player equal to the total mana value of those cards. So again, even if we don't have something like Sundial the Infinite to keep Combustible Gear Hulk around, we can still utilize it in a fantastic way and get a lot of value out of it right away. And we can get even more value out of this than our other unearthed artifact creatures with something like Mirror March. 
It says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield on a new control, flip a coin until you lose the flip. For each flip you won, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste, exile them, begin the next end step. So we can really make the most out of cheating out a massive artifact creature like a combustible gear hulk. Overall though, again, I really like the design of this brand new Mishra, and I really think that unearthing artifacts has a lot of potential. So again, Mishra, congratulations on your sixth place finish. Moving on though, it's time for us to go on to number 5 with Gix, Yogmoth Praetor. Gix is a 3-3 Phyrexian Praetor that costs 1 black black, and it has, whenever a creature deals common damage to one of your opponents, its controller may pay 1 life, if they do, they draw a card. And by paying 4 black black black, discard X cards, exile the top X cards of target opponent's library, you may play lands and cast spells from among the cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. So let's just tackle that first part first. This commander definitely can incentivize yourself and your opponents to attack your opponents. Of course, you can build around this to ensure that you're getting a lot of value out of it and that you're able to get through on your opponents to draw a lot of cards at the exchange of life. Whereas your opponents can make do with what they have, and also can do some of your dirty work for you. Speaking of essentially having your opponents do your dirty work for you though, you can utilize that second ability in a fantastic way to basically Vilnus Wealth one of your opponents for a ton. And of course, since Vilnus Wealth is one of my favorite cards in Magic, and I even have built decks just around Vilnus Wealth, well, yeah, this commander definitely ranked up higher on my list because of that, so being able to trade a ton of cards from your hand to just get a ton of cards for free off the top of opponent's library is definitely a very powerful and very exciting thing. But when it comes to setting yourself up for that kind of a play, you can definitely utilize low to the ground evasive creatures like a changeling outcast. It can't block and it can't be blocked. So yeah, this is basically just a way to draw an extra card on every single one of your turns for the cost of one life. And again, when you fill your board with a lot of low to the ground evasive creatures, you can draw a ton of cards in a turn. And you can also hold on to those cards with a card like Decanter of Endless Water. It's an artifact for three that says you have a maximum hand size and it can tap for one man of any color. So by holding onto those cards, you of course can make that ability even bigger. Again, discarding even more cards to get more cards off the top of an opponent's library. And you can also ensure that you're getting those cards back with a card like Bag of Holding. It says whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. You can also use this to loot, but more importantly, pay for and tap, sacrifice it, return all cards, exile Bag of Holding to their owner's hand. So this can kind of store up those cards that you are discarding to give you them back for an even bigger play, essentially allowing you to villainous wealth another opponent for potentially even more. Or you can also take advantage of discarding cards from your hand by causing your opponents even more pain with something like a Feast of Sanity. It says whenever you discard a card, Feast of Sand deals one damage to any target and you gain one life. So this can be a great way to take your opponents down even further and to gain some of that life back that you're losing from drawing cards. And speaking of losing life and drawing cards, there's Psychosis Crawler which says whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. So now you can punish your opponents even further when you're drawing a ton of cards. Again, you're going to be hitting them with your tiny little creatures that are evasive, but also you're going to be draining them as you are draining life from yourself by drawing those cards. And when your opponents decide to utilize their creatures to draw cards too, you can punish them when they do that, even more so than just the one life that they're losing for that, with something like an Underworld Dreams. It says whenever an opponent draws a card, Underworld Dreams deals one damage to that player. So essentially, it's going to be a hit of two life on all those players whenever they're doing that versus yourself, which again is just going to be one. So yeah, there's a lot of exciting things that you can do with Gix, Yogmoth, Praetor, and most importantly, again, a fantastic way to essentially villainous wealth your opponents, which I think is quite fun. So again, Gix, congratulations on your fifth place finish. Next up, though, let's move on to fourth place with Lauren of the Third Path. She is a 2-1 Human Artificer with Vigilance that costs 2 and a white and has... When she enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment and tap you and target opponent each draw a card. So first up, this commander definitely has a solid ETB that you can utilize to deal with a lot of pesky artifacts and enchantments throughout the game. But most importantly, this commander can be a value engine for yourself and an opponent that you are going to be making deals with. So this commander can definitely be a great way to politic throughout the game, allowing you to essentially, again, gain a lot of card advantage and a lot of favor with a certain opponent. This is the type of commander that you can utilize your opponents even to pit them against each other and make the most out of an ability like this. 
But again, to start things off, let's talk about a blink spell like Cloud Shift, which can be a great way to blink this commander, exiling it and returning to the battlefield under your control so that you can really make the most out of that ETB. So again, this can be a great way to protect your commander from any kind of a targeted removal spell. And also, again, making the most out of that ETB and taking out a lot of artifacts and enchantments throughout the game. And speaking of making the most out of an ability, how about White Plume Adventurer? It says when enters battlefield, you take the initiative, and at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, untap a creature you control. If you've completed a dungeon, untap all creatures you control instead. So being able to untap our commander on every single one of our opponent's upkeeps, again, allows us to draw even more cards throughout the game and gain even more favor with an opponent. Again, with each trip around the table, that's basically going to be four cards drawn. And speaking of gaining favor with an opponent, you can also make more deals with opponents with a card like Pendant of Prosperity. When it enters the battlefield, it comes into play under the control of an opponent of your choice. It has pay two, tap, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand on the battlefield, and then Pendant of Prosperity's owner, that's us, does the exact same thing. So again, when we are wheeling and dealing with our commander's ability, we're also able to then gain even more favor and help utilize cards like this. Of course, we can work with that opponent further with a card like Secret Rendezvous. You and target opponent each draw three cards so yeah, for just three mana. That can be a big play for us. Speaking of a big play, how about Benevolent Offering? Another way to gain favor with an opponent. Choose an opponent. You and that player each create three 1-1 one, one white spirit dragons with flying and choose an opponent. You gain two life for each creature you control and that player gains two life for each creature they control. So again, a commander like this can definitely lead to some very interesting politicking situations. And yeah, even a card like Duel's Heritage can help out with that as well. Whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike until end of turn. With this, you can of course benefit opponents for attacking other opponents that you want to by giving certain creatures double strike and of course, yeah, giving your own creatures double strike as well. So overall, this is definitely an interesting take on a mono white commander, one that can provide you with a lot of card advantage and again, a lot of advantage from that ETB, but also in a way that you can utilize it politically to take advantage of your opponents as well. Next up though, let's move on to the top three with number three with Felden, Ronum Investigator. Felden is a 2-2 human artificer with haste that can't block and it costs one in a red. It has, whenever he is dealt damage, exile that many cards in the top of your library, choose one of them. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. So Felden is all about impulse draw and going about it in a very unique and interesting way. Now, although Felden can't block, of course you can, you know, send him into danger by swinging out with him right away, essentially. And if he is blocked and dealt damage, you can utilize that damage for what I like to call temporary choice card advantage. Again, if he's dealt six damage, you get to look at the top six, get one of them, and you get access to that card until the end of your next turn. Now, more likely in the way that I would build around this commander though, and I think what makes it really fun is this commander can utilize a lot of pinging effects to great effect to get a ton of temporary card advantage throughout the game. So for example, a card like Prodigal Pyromancer, a Tim, as one would say, is fantastic with a commander like this. It can tap to deal one damage to any target, including your commander. And while this might not seem like all that big of a fact, again, when you do utilize this, you're essentially, you know, tapping to impulse draw one. And the more and more of these effects that you have in play, the more impulse draw you have. And again, even a card like Ryle can very much impact the game. It's going to deal one damage to a creature you control. So again, it deals damage to your commander, which is great. It's going to have you draw a card. So for just one mana, this is basically impulse draw one and draw a card. And of course, when we're utilizing those cards from Exile, we can really take advantage of a card like Nalfishni. It says, whenever you cast a spell from Exile copy, you may choose new targets for the copy. If it's a permanent spell, the copy gains haste, and at the beginning of the end step, sacrifice this permanent. So we can get even more value out of those cards that we are casting from that impulse draw. Or how about a background that can help us out as well, Passion Archaeologist. It says, Commander creatures you own have, whenever you cast a spell from exile, this creature deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. So now when we are casting more and more spells out of exile, again with that impulse draw, we can dish out more and more damage to our opponents. Speaking of which, we can dish out damage to, well, anything with Blazing Sun Steel. It says, whatever crit creature is dealt damage deals that much damage to any target. So now when we are pinging our commander throughout the game, we can spread that damage out again to our opponent's faces or their tiny creatures, or actually, if we're set up properly, Felden itself. Because by utilizing a way to make our commander indestructible, like, you know, they Tyrite Sanctum, we can go infinite with this. 
Tyrate Sanctum can turn our commander into a god and then turn that commander god into an indestructible god by getting an indestructible counter on it. And when our commander is indestructible again, no amount of damage can take it out. So with Blazing Sunsteel attached to our commander, we essentially just, you know, assigned one point of damage to our commander with anything, again, like a Ryle. Then with that damage, we say Blazing Sunsteel says, hey, our commander is going to deal that damage and it deals it to itself. Then it deals it again and again and again. So basically, we can impulse draw as many times as we want, or, you know, essentially our entire deck if we really want to, and of course, there are plenty of ways to win from there. But yeah, you don't have to go infinite in a way like this to make this commander interesting. I just really like this different take on impulse choice draw. <laughs> But now it's time for us to move on to number two with the Archimandrite, a 5 human advisor that costs two blue, red, white. It has at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life or X the number of cards in your hand, minus four. And whenever you gain life, each advisor, artificer, and monk you control gains vigilance and gets plus X plus zero until end of turn where X the amount of life you gained. And on top of that, tap three untapped advisors, artificers, and or monks you control draw a card. So this commander utilizes some very interesting tribes in a very interesting way. Up until this point, there really hasn't been an advisor, artificer, or monk specific commander, and this one can utilize them very effectively for card draw, life gain, and of course, pumping them to an absurd amount whenever you are gaining life. And of course, there are plenty of great and effective ways to gain a ton of life to pump your team so that even your smallest, tiniest creature, whether it's an advisor, artificer, or monk, can become incredibly large. Now, speaking of advisors, of course, if you want to make a persistent petitioner's deck around this commander, that is definitely an option. A 1-3 human advisor that has pay 1 tap, target player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. And by tapping 4 untapped advisors you control, target player puts the top 12 cards of their library into their graveyard, In a deck can have any number of cards named persistent petitioners. So if you want to make an entire deck around this, again, utilizing it as an option to mill your opponents out if you need to, or again, just, you know, having a lot of low to the ground advisors, that can take out your opponents when you gain a bunch of life and swing through with them. That, of course, is a way to do it, too. Or, you know, you can make use out of artificers as well, like Ethereum Sculptor A12 that says artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. So, of course, they can help, you know, with any artifact creatures you might have. Or, yeah, mana rocks, too. And, of course, there are plenty of fantastic monks out there. And Rocks Faith Mender can be great in this kind of attack. A15 with lifelink that says whenever you gain life, you gain twice that much life instead. Doubling up on our life gain can, of course, help our creatures hit even harder. But we can also really utilize our commander's ability to tap our creatures for card advantage with a card like Jeskai Ascendancy. It says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control get plus plus one until end of turn, untap those creatures. And on top of that, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. So with this, we can loot a ton throughout the game and, of course, draw an absurd amount of cards by untapping our team quite a bit. We can also really utilize our team size with a card like Path of Bravery, which says, as long as your life total is greater than or equal to your starting life total, creatures you control get plus plus one. And on top of that, whenever one or more creatures you control attack, you gain life equal to the number of attacking creatures. So the more creatures we have in play, and the more we have attacking, the more life we gain, and the more they all get pumped. Or, you know, we can just utilize a single spell to make every single one of our creatures into what is probably a one-shot KO with a card like Congregate. It says target player gains two life for each creature on the battlefield, so this even turns our opponent's creatures against them in a way. Again, there are 20 creatures on the battlefield, that's 40 life we gain at instant speed for just four mana, and that is going to be plus 40, plus zero for all of our creatures until the end of the turn. So yeah, that can be very deadly. So again, the Archimandrite is a fantastic commander in my opinion, again, giving these three separate tribes a home in a very interesting and unique way. But now the moment that you've all been waiting for, it is finally time for the number one commander, in my opinion, of the Brothers War and the Brothers War Precons. And that, of course, is the Golden Pig. And the Golden Pig of the Brothers War and the Precons is... Liberator Urza's Battlethopter. Liberator is a 1-2 Thopter with Flash and Flying that costs 3 and it says... You may cast color spells and artifact spells as though they had Flash. And whenever you cast a spell, if the amount of mana spent to cast that spell is greater than Liberator Urza's Battlethopter's power, put a plus one counter on Liberator. So colorless commanders are few and far between, and it is really encouraging to see such an effective one come about. Essentially, this commander is kind of like a Vidalcan Ori in the command zone for your colorless deck. Again, since you can cast colorless spells and artifact spells as though they had flash, 
and essentially every single one of your spells are going to be meeting that requirement. So even just with that, this commander brings an interesting and unique way to build around a colorless commander. And of course, on top of that, yeah, you can grow this commander's power throughout the game by casting bigger and bigger spells and getting through with it thanks to that flying on your opponents. So you can also lean into Voltron if you'd like to do that. But yeah, essentially this is a Shimmer Mirror in the Command Zone. Flash, you may cast artifact spells as though they had Flash. I mean, it is a Shimmer Mirror, but even better, obviously, because, well, it's your commander. And also on top of that, it includes colorless spells as well. And being able to play any of your spells at instant speed gives you a ton of flexibility. It allows you to utilize mana on your opponent's turns. So essentially, you can be more reactive. Even just flashing in a soul ring on an opponent's turn might make it so that you've got more mana than your opponents had expected you to have. And of course, you can build up your resources very quickly and out of nowhere with plays like this. Again, soul ring, of course, an artifact that costs one and it taps for two. And of course, you can make your mana even more efficient with a card like Joy is Familiar. Historic spells you cast cost one less to cast, so that counts artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. And being able to ramp a ton and also reduce the cost of your spells can really help you play some absolutely massive and monstrous things, again, out of nowhere at flash speed thanks to your commander. For example, how about Metalwork Colossus, a 10-10 for 11 mana that's going to cost X less to cast Rex, the total converted mana cost of non-creature artifacts you control. And by sacrificing two artifacts, you return Metalwork Colossus from your graveyard to your hand. So in a colorless deck like this that's going to be utilizing a ton of artifacts, especially non-creature artifacts, you can essentially get this cost down to basically nothing, so you can flash in a 10-10 out of absolutely nowhere that you can just keep getting back if it's dealt with. And speaking of a 10-10, well, we can get two 10-10s with Desolation Twin, a 10-10 for 10 that says whenever you cast a spell, create a 10-10 Colossal Eldrazi creature token. Being able to flash this in can just be a great combat trick. If an opponent's going to be attacking us, we can just, you know, get this in a you know token copy of it. Essentially, two 10-10s to block their creatures, take them out, and then also have a lot more power than they might have expected on our side of the board next turn. Speaking of which, we can utilize a board wipe in a fantastic way like Gruesome Slaughter. It's a sorcery, but again, with this commander, we can cast it basically at instant speed. Until end of turn, colorless creatures you control gain, tap this creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. So our opponents might think that their armies are safe, and then all of a sudden, we just flash this at the end, you know, of our opponent's turn right before ours, and we wipe out some armies. So, Liberator Urza's Battlethopter, again, I think you're a very unique and very inspiring brand new colorless commander that many players out there have been waiting for, and yeah, I really like your design, so again, make sure and look out in the mail for your Golden Pig trophy, make sure you're displaying it proudly, and again, congratulations on being what is, in my opinion, the best commander from the Brothers War and the Brothers War Precons. And also a quick reminder to be on the lookout for my episode on the most powerful commanders of the Brothers War and the Brothers War Precons. This ranking tier list should be out in the near future. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.